Welcome to Home Ties, a podcast about staying connected to home, no matter where you are. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Jesus said that the last days would be terrible times when people would be lovers of money, lovers of themselves. The abundance and ease of viewing pictures of beautiful-looking people creates discontent in the hearts of ordinary-looking folks who simply cannot compare with Kim Kardashian or Chris Hemsworth. As I grow older, I also am dissatisfied with what I see in the mirror, no matter how much time I spend at the gym. Even with a stricter diet and more exercise, I'm never going to look like that handsome young boy in the wedding picture on our bedroom dresser. Now, this isn't just a first world problem. Everyone wants to make an impression with their external appearance whether they're dressed in a Dior dress or they're wrapped their thighs with a brightly colored cloth from the market. From what I see on social media, any day is a good one to post a selfie with your brand new outfit. Many African men go for a clean-shaven look with bald heads and chests Government officials put on a suit and tie, and everyone else puts on their working clothes. You see Muslim merchants sporting a white dish dash, and their wives covered with a black abaya and a niqab. Male day laborers wear blue jumpsuits, or old t-shirts and torn pants, but on Sunday, everyone is dressed to the nines. In many churches, there's a special uniform for the ladies' groups, consisting of a white blouse and a purple or blue skirt with a matching belt and headscarf. Many churches also sell chitanji cloths with a specific design or logo connected to their denomination. It's branding 101 reminds me how in one of my American congregations, the members wore the jersey of the local professional football team to church on game day. I won't say which team, but some people might actually think that during the season of Pentecost, the church is decorated in their team's honor. Over the course of the average American's lifetime, a person will dedicate seven years and a hundred and forty three thousand dollars to taking care of themselves. We put so much effort into keeping up our external appearance and little effort into our spiritual care by comparison. We are vain creatures of skin deep beauty, always reaching for a new product or item that will make us feel better about ourselves, if only for a little while. We hardly ever think about those less fortunate brothers and sisters who bear the burdens of physical and mental handicaps, or give thanks to God for our sound limbs and mind. Instead of being content, we are critical of ourselves and others who we judge as unfit, unattractive, and unworthy of our love. Right at the beginning of the book of Hebrews, the author writes, The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. When you look at Jesus the man, 
You don't see a guy with bulging biceps and ripped abs. You don't see a flush Fabio. You see a homeless man with dirty feet walking on dirt roads. You don't see a golden crown and toga. You see a crown of thorns and a purple robe. On the day of Jesus' death, you see frail flesh. You see a body that is beaten and bloodied. His enemies dehumanized and humiliated him publicly, stripping him naked on that cross. He wasn't able to hide his love handles or the deep cuts into his flesh from gawking eyes. No one mistook Jesus for a bodybuilder or a movie star. His weakness was on display. No one who saw that gruesome spectacle in person that day would enjoy revisiting it in their memory. Isaiah 53 says he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. And yet Jesus is the exact image and representation of God's glory. You cannot get any higher than God. You can't be more attractive than God. You can't have more power than God. You can't feel any better about yourself than being God. But Jesus didn't lose any of that when he died on the cross, no matter how things appeared externally. Look at his love for his enemies. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Look at his concern for his weeping mother. Here is your son. Jesus remained in control until the very end of his life. Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. Even in his cry, My God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus didn't lose sight of his mission to save the world. But for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus' suffering is nothing to be ashamed of. It just brings even more glory to God. Jesus' death is not off-putting. It attracts even more people to God. Jesus' denial of self transforms the lives of billions from self-absorbed consumption to self-sacrificing service. We are not worthy of Christ's attention. He is not attracted to our external appearance or our inner qualities. No, in spite of every vain thought and every shallow deed we have done, Jesus loved us and offered himself to God's punishment in our place. That's why I ask the Lord to forgive me for my self-love, my vanity, my attraction to my own works instead of his works. I need to remember his son's outwardly focused life so that I turn away from myself and turn toward other people. When I'm feeling uncomfortable in my own flesh, it is helpful to remember the glory that Christ has in heaven at God's right hand, the glory he has right now, and the glory that will be mine one day the glory of a new body and a new soul that he has prepared for me, clean from every trace of sin and unworthiness. Jesus has saved me from meaningless existence and given me something lasting to work on for here on earth 
and hereafter in heaven.